So I'm going to talk next about the implicit grant flow and the user agent flow, which is the implementation of implicit grants with some small variations within, within Salesforce. So the implicit grant flow is intended for scenarios where the client's application isn't able to protect um, a confidential um, sort of application wide secret. Um, but is able to protect um, per user secrets like, like access tokens. So uh, as well as the browser, which is used for, um, for authentication and, and authorization, um, we'll also um, uh, be interacting with the, with the auth server and, and the resource server. Um, we expect that the client, so the, 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 both the browser and any other um, components of, of the client application, um, for example, a mobile app are able to protect the access token. Um, it's worth noting if we are using this flow or, or a version of, 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 um, of a flow similar to implicit grants, um, it's necessary not just to implement what's in the old spec, but, but additional security mechanisms as well. There's, there's a number of vulnerabilities that have been found related to implicit grant flow. So to run through the main steps, so there's three system actors involved in the flow itself. So the, the browser that's, um, that, that the user is, um, is using um, and is acting on behalf of the client. The authorization server, so the application that the user is, is actually logging into and, and authorizing through. And the resource server, so the application which the, um, the client browser or the client will be will be will be integrating with. So the flow starts um, immediately with with an access token request from from the browser. So this is a um, an HTTP request, or, or it could be a redirect to the authorization endpoint at the authorization server. So the response type of this uh, this request is token to indicate that that the clients immediately wants wants a token a token back from the request. The client ID correlates the, the request with uh, the specific client app at the authorization server. The scope is would be set to the scopes that the, that the client requires to, to carry out the integration. Um, the redirect URI, this would be the endpoint that the authorization server is instructed to return the, the access tokens to um, at the, at the clients. So this would be a URL that would need to match a, a a whitelist of URLs set up as callback URLs in the authorization server um, and, and a state parameter um, is, is, is also often used here. So um, as with the web server flow, this, this can, um, can, can, uh, can be used for, for a couple of, in a couple of different ways. So first is a security mechanism to um, help the browser correlate that the that the, um, the, the redirect with the access token that comes back from the auth server uh, has been made in response to the original access token request so by, by matching um, a, a random value that is added as, as a fragment or, or as, the, as the state parameter. Um, it's also, it's also can be helpful to persist information between the access token request and, and the token response. So the authorization server will, will first check is that is the user already logged in, do they already have a session at the, at the auth server? And if not, then prompt for, for login to establish that session. It will check if they that user has previously uh, approved the scopes that are being requested as, as part of the token request. And if not, then prompt them to, to agree to, to sharing those scopes. Um, and it'll check that the U-direct redirect URI that's been provided matches one of the allowed values as, as callback URLs that's been configured in the authorization server. And assuming that's the case, we'll then redirect the browser back to the, uh, to the redirect URI that's been provided, so the, the callback URL. Uh, that redirect will contain an access token as, as, a, a, as a parameter. Um, or as as, um, uh, as information in, embedded in that redirect in some way. So Salesforce has a slightly different way of doing that or I'll describe in a moment. Um, the response can also potentially 
um, includes a reef well, in, in some implementations uh, there, there can be a refresh token return so so for the salesforce implementation of user agent uh, it, it, salesforce does allow a refresh token to be to be issued although that's not strictly within the OAuth implicit grant spec so that's that's something that we often don't see in other implementations the state parameter, as I mentioned, this will be returned by the auth server, so that can be checked against the original state that the browser, uh, that the client and the browser submitted. And the scope list will be returned so that it's, it's clear to the browser what this access token is, is allowed to do. And the response will be signed so that, um, so that signature can be checked against the authorization service certificate um, by, by the client. So at this point, the client is then, is then free to, to access APIs at the resource server, so either directly from the browser or, or if this browser has, um, has some, some backend element to it, or um, then it's, it's possible for that, those APIs to be called from, from there too. So there's a few things to consider from a security perspective if if, um, if you're in a position of considering implementing this flow. So, um, so firstly, just to explain a bit about how this flow came about. So the, it, it, it historically, it, is, it, it has been recommended um, for use in, in browser applications. And the reason that this flow um, is, has been recommended over an authorization code, code based flow um, is because um, uh, his, historically it hasn't been possible to um, to make uh, cross-origin requests um, directly from a JavaScript application running running in a browser, uh, so this flow was uh, was considered a compromise to allow the browser to be um, uh, to, uh, to to be issued a token without needing to make a, um, a an HTTP POST request to the to the auth server to um, to to uh, to obtain that token. Um, it's now, it's worth bearing in mind that the current uh, recommendation from the Internet Engineering Task Force is, is now not to use this flow and instead to use, uh, to use the authorization code with Pixie flow for any scenarios where we don't have the ability to securely protect a, a client secret. Um, so to consider some of the reasons for that, for that recommendation, so that there are some some risks to using this flow. So the, um, the the fact that the access token is coming through a through a browser redirect um, opens it opens this flow up to some of the vulnerabilities that, that we have in in browser technology. So the if um, if this the sort of the, the typical standard implementation of of, um, uh, of supplying the, the access token as as a a um, uh, as a parameter on the uh, on the on the redirect so as a as a url parameter on that um on that that, that redirect url um that uh, the access token and the other information in that response can be exposed to um as through through uh through http referrals to any any sites that the um, that the user might might access after um after this so so this there's potential that that that, um, that information that access token can be can be leaked to other places in in that way. There, there are some workarounds around that that particular threat. Um, talk at a moment about what Salesforce does with that. Um, it's also um, again the, as, as a result of this this happening through a redirect. Um, this this um, this URL is exposed to the browser history, so potentially. Um, so potentially stored and um, and, and open to, to any threats that, that we might have around um, applications accessing browser history. Um, there's also um, this this flow is quite open to um, to a, th a threat called access token injection, which is where if we had a potentially a man in the middle attack, um, so and it's a cross site request forgery attack where. Um, where it was possible to um, to switch an access token in, in um, or, or switch the response, um, so to to make a redirect back to the to the um, browser, which contains an access token, which is which is not the one that was in fact issued um, for the for the browser, and then it's possible for an attacker to 
um, to uh, substitute that, that access token for a uh, for, for, for the access token of, of a different user, um, which could lead to the resource owner. So the, the end user logging in as somebody they don't think they're logging in as. Um, it's advisable, well, in, in fact, it's, um, it's stipulated in the specification for refresh tokens not to be used for this flow. And that's that's um, largely because this is um, uh, the, the, there is um, the, the, there are so many more threat vectors here, and also the fact that the um, that the client may, may not be in a position to protect that refresh token. Um, it is, as I mentioned, it is possible with the Salesforce implementation. If Salesforce is the auth server to to issue refresh tokens, which is is um, one of the variations from from the core spec. Um, but if an implementation is used without refresh tokens, then the only mechanism that the client has to re-authenticate um, without the user's involvement um, is to rely on the third party session cookies um, that, are, that are set by the authorization server. Um, so that's, um, that, that's a mechanism that's, that's been used historically to, um, to ensure so if the access tokens are short lived as, as, as they should be with this flow, and then it's possible for the for the client to re-authenticate um, on, on a regular basis without the user being aware that that's happening. Um, browser support for third-party cookies is um, due to be phased out um, over, over, the next, uh, over the next year or two. Um, so, uh, so, so, so that, that, that could potentially complicate implementations where, um, which, which do rely on that mechanism. Um, so I mentioned Salesforce does use this flow and has some slight variations. So in terms of where it's used, so the, the Salesforce mobile SDK authentication methods uh, currently do, do use um, the, the user agent flow. Um, and as a result, the mobile, any mobile publisher apps, um, which, uh, which um, are, are, are published. Um, so uh, as because the, the mobile publisher um, technology sits on top of mobile SDK, and those publisher apps will also also use the user agent flow. Um, there are some some variations that Salesforce has put in place to to make this more secure than a standard implementation. So, um, so any uh, the access token and also any any session IDs that might have been been, been issued as part as part of the uh, within the the redirect are uh, are specified um, as uh, hash fragments of, of of the url rather than query string parameters so um so what this does is it, it, it instructs that these urls are treated or that that portion of the url is, is treated as for, for the client client only so um, so this information we at least won't be held in in server logs um, there's also a recommendation from salesforce that when we if, if this flow is being implemented, um, that, that um, some action is taken to uh, to instruct the the browser to remove the, um, the the URLs with any sensitive information from from browser history. So, doing something like a a window location replace method um, in, in, if this was a, a JavaScript implementation. Um, the um, there's also the, an opportunity with the Salesforce implementation to request for session IDs to be returned um, by, by uh, using this, um, this hybrid token um, parameter on the, um, on the, the token request. Um, and this allows the, uh, the, the client to make, um, uh, to, to make a, a, an HTTP uh, call to, to check um, at the auth server if the client, if the um, if, if the user is, is still logged in without there being a need for third party cookies. And so that would, would be, a, be a, a reasonable workaround to the, um, uh, to the end of support for third party cookies. So considerations around when it's a good idea to use this flow or, or when it's not a good idea to use this flow. And so the, as, as I mentioned, this has been in place for some time um, in, in the mobile S SDK framework um, and uh, so it and, and that 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 mechanism is available to use um, with with very little effort um, if, if we are developing a, a mobile SDK app um, so generally it's it, it, it's it's probably a good idea to reuse the, the mechanism just based on 
um, uh, based based on that being a a, a well established and and generally quite trusted mechanism. Although um, the flow itself is is not recommended, and the the cell source adaptations um, have have demonstrated at least some level of security. Um, on the other hand, if we are looking at a, at a fresh implementation and there are there are a number of security vulnerabilities with this flow and as a result it's it's almost certainly not a good idea to choose this flow over an authorization code based approach um, so whilst there are mitigations that we can make um, it's there are there are a number of those and, and even with all of those mitigations there's still theoretical security risks that that, that don't exist with an authorization code based flow um, we'd also need to consider how we address the real authentication um, without without the need for third party cookies. So, um, so whether that's using a refresh token as which would be you know a, a difference to the to the core implicit grant flow, um, in the way that Salesforce does, or um, or some other mechanism to ensure that that the um, uh, that, that, that the client is able to ensure that the user is is um, is, is still logged in. Um, and and finally, just to, just to mention, as, as, I, as I said earlier, the um, the current uh, industry recommendation is is not to use this flow and to instead uh, opt for an authorization code based alternative. 